Christmas is in 12 days, reminder, and a big question at this time of year is, do you get a real tree or a fake one? We know most consumerism has an impact on our environment, but if you haven't settled on a tree yet, this segment might help you. To tell us which is the better option, science and climate specialist Darius Madabi is back. Darius, no matter what kind of tree you take home, you're producing some carbon emissions. How do those numbers compare? It's a more complicated question than you might think, Dan. Now, so let's just jump right in. To steal a line from one of the CBC grades, here is a chart. Now, if you take a look, you can see that most of your carbon emissions when you get an artificial tree come right at the start. So you get basically a flat line because as soon as you get that tree, producing the tree, getting it to your home, that's really all you have to do and then take it out of the box every year. Whereas with a natural tree, you're going to have to get that investment every single year because you have to go out and get that new tree. So every time you take it home, you're going to bring home a, a whole new tree, a whole new set of carbon emissions. But it actually takes, this, according to this study, 20 years for those carbon emissions to equalize, according to some others, anywhere from 10 to 20 years. So it's a long time. It's a long time you have to keep your artificial tree to get that evening out. But we can actually take a closer look. Take a look at this. You can see the breakdown of what part of the life cycle those emissions come from. So for an artificial tree, when you're producing that tree, you have to produce the plastic and the metal and assemble it. 97% of artificial trees come from China, so shipping it overseas is a huge investment, whereas producing a natural tree actually absorbs carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. But then you have to drive your tree home every single year with a natural tree, so that's the transport part of this. And then for disposal, all that carbon that the uh, tree soaked up when it was growing, once it's been mulched and returned to the trailheads and, and other places by the province, it's going to break down again. And so that transport also, also matters. But you can see, even when you take an artificial tree for its average lifespan of six years, and you divide that up each year, the total emissions from an artificial tree still far exceed a natural tree. But this is based on the statistics of today, or several years ago when the study was conducted. Now, Richard Hamelin leads the forestry department at UBC, and he said climate change-driven extreme heat and uh, drought events, both of which have hit BC's own Christmas tree farms extremely hard, are probably the biggest threat to your real tree remaining eco-friendly. Everything is that you do on a Christmas tree farm will be sort of energy intensive. Uh, so so that, that's quite possible that this sort of the, the balance in the race of uh, you know the, the the carbon footprint between the artificial and the uh, and the and, and the natural trees will you know that will become more uh, more even uh, over time. So if we get down to brass tacks, step beating around the bush, boom, boom, boom. Which tree is better? Well, we've talked about climate, but there are other considerations as well. So when you buy a real tree, you're usually supporting local businesses, but growing those trees sometimes means using pesticides. Artificial trees can be bought secondhand, but once they reach the end of their lifespan, they'll end up in a landfill. And then there's other options entirely, like live potted trees, like the ones you can see on the monitors behind me. If you want, you can go to UBC, rent a live potted tree, and then they'll plant it in the spring, and it'll grow into its own, its own thing. So there's a lot to factor in. But Hamlin and I spent quite a while talking about the importance of keeping these things in perspective. I think it would be tiny. I, I think if you drove uh, a couple hours to see family during the holidays, there, there's going to go all the emission that you would put into uh, a, a Christmas tree, uh, probably either natural or artificial. If you fly somewhere, well, you know, during the first 15 minutes of your flight, you will have burned as much or, or spent as much carbon as you would uh, from your Christmas tree. So if you're willing to bike or take transit into work just a few extra days next year, you can easily make up the difference in carbon emissions. So this holiday season, maybe just cut yourself a little bit of slack and do what makes you happy. And for me and Hamelin, take a listen. That's this. Frankly, uh, a, a real Christmas tree, it smells great. Uh, it, just, it, it just feels like the right thing. The, the artificial ones don't cut it for me. <laughs> so whether it's convenience or just being happy, just maybe cut yourself a bit of slack this mm -hmm. year. I'm not surprised. He is a forestry expert. <laughs> Science and climate specialist Darius Madavi, thanks very much. Thanks, Dan.